Hey guys, eh, how about a quick little video? Why not? So check it out. <clears throat> My 75 gallon aquarium uh, is gone, or it shrunk, one of the two. And uh, my brother now has that. We'll be setting that up this weekend. I'm going to take you through the setup of the 75 gallon. So because that's gone, I was using it for my quarantine tank. This is now my quarantine tank. It's a 10 gallon. Totally awesome. Love this thing. It's a cheap 10 gallon. I got the lid at Walmart. Walmart! I don't like Walmart. But it was a cheap lid with built-in LEDs. Now, this little foam filter basically is a simple little pump that blows water through it. Goes through the bottom. Sucks in all the debris. This uh, foam sponge not only holds the beneficial bacteria, but it also pulls in all the garbage. Now, it's like maybe five inches wide and it's rated for a 75 gallon aquarium this is only a 10 gallon so it's doing a really awesome job the water's crystal clear and that sponge to the left <clears throat> was taken from my sump I cut it in half so I dropped it in and it pretty much cycled this tank beneficial bacteria now I'm dosing copper from Coop, um, Seachum, Coopermine, to kill the ick parasite. Ick will die with the copper. Now, it will not kill the beneficial bacteria. Oh, there's Mocha. That dude is really small. I just got him. He is a darker orange with black. And he's going to turn, when he matures, to be almost black, a very deep violet-looking black. He's the runt, very tiny guy. Uh, you can't really tell, but he's about an inch wide. He is a mocha clown, so that's how he got his name, mocha. The guy right there in the middle, right there, that's Da Vinci. It's a Da Vinci clown. And uh, <clears throat> that one right there, hiding in the back, that just swam away. That is a Picasso clown, although she looks like a snowflake clown. She is the largest fish. The largest clown will become the female. Now, there's another Picasso hiding in the back. Oh, there he is. That's a male as well. These little guys are new. Now, I had four Picasso clowns. Let me tell you what happened with this, uh, my tank. These guys came from my JBJ 45 gallon aquarium. Now, everything was cool. I even had a blue tang in that JBJ 45. Um, was doing totally awesome. I really loved that fish. Um, I unfortunately only had him or her for two weeks. They passed away. They wound up getting ick, and uh, that parasite killed the fish. I put everybody into this quarantine tank and the blue tang named dory my kids named her dory she was doing really well eating everything was great uh she was swimming around my starry blenny was in here uh dory never left the blenny's side and she loved to swim with the clownfish really great personality however dory passed away she was sick the ick got a hold of her now. How did she get ick? Well, in my JBJ45, I bought a anemone. And I did not quarantine the anemone. You cannot use that copper solution, Coopermine by Seachum. If there are inverts like shrimp or snails present, it will kill them instantly, starfish. It will also kill coral instantly. So you can't use copper. So I didn't quarantine the anemone. Most people do not quarantine corals. So how would you quarantine a coral? Well, I would recommend getting a separate 10-gallon uh, aquarium like this, or even a 5-gallon, half the size would be perfect. 
Get yourself one of these little filters just so the water gets oxygenated and cheap LED lighting, such as this lid with LED built in. That should be good enough for the coral. I would even go so far as to place this tank next to a window for sunlight. Um, yeah, you may have a little algae outbreak, but you're not really going to be feeding this tank anyway, except once a week, feeding the coral, depending on what coral you buy. So I, from now on, I'm going to buy, uh, I'm going to get a five-gallon aquarium for a coral that I purchased because I dipped the anemone, but I did not quarantine it. So there was ick present in the water at the LRS local reef store. It only takes one drop, my friends, and there's a parasite in it, I'm sure, because everything was fine until I got that anemone, and then guess what? Two or three weeks after I got the anemone, I saw my blue tang scratching itself on a rock, known as flashing. Um, and then it was doing pretty bad. Its whole body looked like massive chicken pox. I got him or her out of there, threw them in this quarantine tank. I took the clowns out of there because if one is affected, they will all be infected. Now, those of you following the channel know that I had four clownfish, and or five clownfish. The maroon, she's hiding right there, a little tiny. And Mocha is giving the maroon a run for his or her money. The maroon was there first, but Mocha is starting to become the boss right there. So Mocha is only two days new in this aquarium. So I had five clowns, four Picassos, and the maroon clownfish. Well, three days ago, I could not find two of my clowns. There's not many places for them to hide. I thought, what the hell is going on? So I took the PVC pipe out and they're still not anywhere. Okay, long story short, I found them on the carpeting here. One was like a potato chip. The other one was nearing potato chip status. It really, really bummed me out because those guys were awesome. I bought all four Picassos at the same time. They're not cheap, but more importantly, they were really cool. So two of the four remain. I found a Da Vinci and Mocha here for pretty inexpensive at a local reef store. So I got them. So I'm kind of back where I started. My Blue Tang and my Starry Blenny passed away. I have no idea why the Starry Blenny passed away. Um, I don't know. Two days before they died, he or she died, they just weren't eating. Anyway, the clowns are doing really well. Um, these dudes are very hardy, as all clownfish are, and they will not be affected much by the copper. But when I dose the copper, I dose 50% of what Seachem says, because if you dose what they say, you are really coming close to the toxic level and fish will die quickly and if they don't die they'll become damaged to the point where you cannot save them from copper poisoning it is toxic to fish so i dose half the recommended it is good enough and it works it's called a copper bath if you will it doesn't take much to kill the parasites Copper destroys them. Another thing that destroys these damn parasites in the water is starvation. So while these guys are in here for six weeks, the parasite that's in my 45-gallon aquarium upstairs is being starved to death. Um, their life cycle is 28 days. So you want to keep them in there for an extra two weeks as an extra measure, which... That's the minimum. So six weeks, I might go eight weeks. Keep these guys cool. Do water changes twice a week. 50%, not much. It's only five gallons. And uh, the reason for that is because you want to get rid of all the ammonia because ammonia in their water from their pee will kill them. Ammonia is highly toxic to fish. That's why I've got 
one of these ammonia badges, you can see that it's still yellow. That's the safe zone. A little higher is green. That's alert. You need to change water instantly if you get to green. Another great thing with these ammonia badges is it's not thrown off by the amount of copper in the water. You can get yourself a co um, an ammonia test kit, but if you have copper in your water, like I do, when you're treating for the parasite, that will throw off the ammonia test. These badges by Seachum are not thrown off by the copper test. Plus, at a glance, you can see what the ammonia level is, which is great. Um, you have to replace these ammonia badges by Seachum once a year. So anyway, that's it. I unfortunately lost Dory. No more blue tanks for me. The tank upstairs will be strictly the clown tank. I don't know why the other two committed suicide. They jumped out of the tank. The lid was on. It was a different lid at the time. And a different tank, actually. A different 10-gallon. That was actually for reptiles. And it had a 1-inch gap out the back. And I had the water close to the surface. So I'm thinking they swam up to it. And they, they jumped out. So I've got the water level 2 inches below. And the lid snaps on top. No one's going anywhere. So... That's that. I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, they're doing well. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you Friday night during the live show at 10 p.m. Where we take calls. And uh, every Saturday is a new Rod or Two brief show. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Any questions, comment below. And I'll see you guys soon. Happy reefing.